Hello, I'm Kristen Bowen with Roadmasters Marketing Department. Today we're going to install Roadmasters Portable Braking System Even Brake in a 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This video will give you a good idea of what's involved in a typical install, from start to finish. Most of the video sequences are of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, but some segments show different vehicles in order to better illustrate the installation. First, let's look at the components. When you open the box, you should find the Even Brake, the literature packet, the ICX transmitter, the brake light relay, the breakaway system, and the motorhome monitor. Before you begin the installation, be sure to check online at Roadmaster's website, roadmasterinc.com. You may find vehicle specific information which may not have been available when your version of the Even Brake Owner's Manual was published. Next, check the Vehicle Owner's Manual for the 12 volt outlet fuse rating. Even brake requires a minimum of 15 amps. Be sure to check the Owner's Manual for the correct towing position of the ignition switch. If the Owner's Manual is not available, set the ignition switch to the off position making sure the steering wheel is unlocked. Now check the vehicle's 12 volt outlet to see if it functions when the vehicle is ready to be towed. To verify that you have power at the 12 volt outlet, use the Even Brake Power Cord. First, if necessary, unlock the steering wheel. Then, make sure that any fuses that are required to be removed for towing are indeed removed. By the way, you can keep those fuses out until the installation is complete. Now, verify that 12 volts are present at the outlet by plugging in Even Brake's power cord. The red light on the power cord will illuminate if there is power. If the 12 volt outlet is less than 15 amps, or the 12 volt outlet doesn't function when the vehicle is ready to be towed, Order Roadmaster's optional 12 volt outlet kit, part number 9332. Next, we're going to check the brake lights. This is very similar to checking the 12 volt outlet. If you haven't already, unlock the steering wheel. Make sure that any fuses that are required to be removed for towing are removed. If necessary, turn the ignition key to the tow position. Now, pump the brakes and check to see if the brake lights illuminate. If the brake lights do not illuminate, it will be necessary to install a separate stoplight switch. Roadmaster has an optional stoplight switch kit available for many popular towed vehicles. Now that we've finished our pre-installation, we're ready to install even brake, starting with the breakaway system. Mount the breakaway switch at the front of the vehicle on the driver's side. Choose an area you can easily reach. The mounting point must be strong enough to hold the switch firmly in place so that the breakaway pin will pull freely from the switch. Mount the switch in a horizontal position with the breakaway pin facing towards the motorhome. We will be attaching the ICX transmitter a little later. However, since the breakaway wiring harness will be connected to the ICX transmitter, choose a location for the ICX transmitter now. Look for a mounting point on the driver's side of the vehicle. The mounting surface must be strong enough to hold the transmitter firmly in place so that an electrical connector can be plugged into and out of it. This is the location we chose for this vehicle. The end of the transmitter with the antenna, LED indicator, and socket must be visible and accessible. Once you've found a mounting point for the ICX transmitter, look for a pre-existing hole in the firewall close to where you'll mount the ICX transmitter. On this vehicle, there is a pre-existing hole. Take the other end of the wiring harness and pass it through the hole in the firewall. Feed enough of the remaining wiring harness through to make the connection to the ICX transmitter. If there is no pre-existing hole, drill a half inch hole through the firewall. Drill from the engine compartment or from the interior of the vehicle, whichever is more convenient. Before drilling, make certain you will not damage any components on the other side of the firewall. Now, cut through the included grommet on one side. Next, slide the grommet over the wiring harness. Then, feed the wiring harness through the half inch hole you drilled in the firewall. Fit the grommet into the hole. Feed enough of the remaining wiring harness through to make the connection to the ICX transmitter. Finally, seal the grommet with the silicone sealant. Next, route the breakaway wiring harness from the front of the vehicle to the firewall. Stay away from lines, hoses, moving parts, or any hot components such as the exhaust system. If you need to, use wire ties to secure the breakaway wiring harness. Connect the wiring harness to the breakaway switch now. 
During the pre-installation check, we saw that the brake lights came on when you pressed the brake pedal, so we will now install the brake light relay. We are going to be attaching the red wire on the brake light relay to a fuse that is powered by the ignition switch. First, using a test light, locate a fuse that operates off the ignition switch. When you turn the key, the light will illuminate. Now remove the fuse. This will allow us to determine which side of the fuse we will use to make our connection to the fuse tap. Again, using the test light, turn the ignition on and off. As the key is turned on and off, the hot side will illuminate and the cold side will not. Attach the fuse tap to the hot side of the fuse. Next, reinstall the fuse. Verify that the fuse tap functions when the ignition key is turned on. Then, connect the red wire from the brake light relay to the fuse tap. This shows the actual fuse connection for this install. Now, find the cold side of the brake light switch. On the Jeep Liberty, the brake light switch is located behind a removable panel under the steering wheel. On the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the cold side of the brake light switch is routed from the switch under the driver's side threshold and then to the rear of the vehicle. With the test light, find the wire from the brake light switch. Verify that this is the correct wire by applying the brakes on and off. Now that you've found the wire, Roadmaster recommends that you remove the brake light fuse before you cut the wire. Otherwise, on some vehicles, pressing the brake pedal may activate the theft deterrent system or other electrical system indicators. Next, cut the wire. Attach the yellow wiring connector on the brake light relay to the wire from the cold side of the brake light switch. Attach the blue wire connector to the wire going to the rear of the vehicle. Now, connect the remaining white wire to any suitable ground. Reinstall the brake light fuse, which you removed after you cut the cold side of the brake light wire. Test to make sure that the brake light relay functions correctly. With the towed vehicle's engine running, the brake lights work normally. When the towed vehicle steering is unlocked, usually by turning the key to the tow position, the brake lights do not function. We are now going to be temporarily mounting the ICX transmitter. Do not cut any wires on or permanently mount the ICX transmitter at this time. It will be permanently mounted after a successful communications test between the motorhome and the vehicle. In a previous step, we demonstrated how to find the hot and cold side of a fuse. Now, locate a fuse that will provide 12 volts continuously. Find the cold side of the fuse and install the fuse tap. Install a spade terminal on the red wire and a ring terminal on the white wire of the ICX. Connect the white wire to any suitable ground and the red wire to the fuse tap you just installed. Previously, we routed the wiring from the breakaway switch through the firewall. Connect this harness to the ICX plug. Next, connect the green wire from the brake light relay to the number one terminal of the ICX. Using the Velcro strips provided, mount the transmitter so that the end with the antenna, LED indicator, and socket is facing towards the rear of the vehicle. First, slide the driver's seat back as far as it will go. Position even brake between the driver's seat and the brake pedal, about where it will sit when connected to the brake pedal. Make sure even brake is stable with all four feet making solid contact with the floor. If even brake is not stable, you can raise or lower one or more of the adjustable feet. There is an adjustable foot at each corner. Raise or lower the feet by turning them clockwise or counterclockwise. Then tighten the feet with a wrench and test to see if even brake is stable. If necessary, readjust the feet. Find a bracing point at the front of the driver's seat for the black adjustable handle, which is referred to as the seat pad. There are two anchor holes that the knob on the seat pad may be threaded into for additional fit options. Also, the seat pad may be rotated 180 degrees or removed entirely for a better fit. Adjust the seat pad up or down until it's level to the bracing point you have chosen. Press the air relief button. Extend the arm with the clamp on it and connect the clamp to the brake pedal. If necessary, use pliers to bend any or all of the tabs to better fit the vehicle's brake pedal. There is another tab at the top of the clamp, which may also be bent for a better fit on the brake pedal. 
Next, move even brake forward until the cylinder is retracted back in the box. Move the seat forward until it contacts the adjustable seat pad. Make certain the brake pedal is not being depressed by even brake's pedal clamp. Connect the ICX transmitter cord from the even brake to the ICX transmitter. Plug the motorhome monitor's power cord into the motorhome's 12 volt outlet and secure it with the cord lock. Plug the even brake power cord into the towed vehicle's 12 volt outlet and secure it with the cord lock. Unlock the steering wheel. Now, the red light on the 12 volt power cord should illuminate and even brake's compressor will begin to fill the air reservoir. Once the air reservoir is filled, the LED next to the test button will flash red and green. Check the motorhome monitor. If the system is ready to test, the yellow LED will be illuminated and the LCD display will read, even brake ready to test. Now press the test button. Even brake will begin a self-diagnostic test. As part of the test, the air cylinder will cycle back and forth three times. After even brake has finished the self-diagnostic test, the test light will illuminate green to indicate the system is ready. At the motorhome monitor, the LCD text display will read, Test is good, system ready. Now that you have checked system communications, you can permanently mount the ICX transmitter. Use the Velcro strips or the four screws provided in the kit, depending on your customer's preference. It is not necessary to set the braking preferences. If none are selected, even brake is programmed for the average settings. But you should demonstrate this to the customer during your walkthrough after the installation. First, set the braking force. This setting tells even brake how hard to apply the brakes. Press the red force button and one of the three LEDs next to the force button will illuminate. From left to right, select the minimum, average, or maximum setting. One of the three LEDs next to the force button will illuminate to confirm your choice. Set the sensitivity in the same manner as you set the force settings. This setting tells even brake when to apply the brakes. One of the three LEDs to the left of the sensitivity button will illuminate to confirm your choice. It is not necessary to select braking preferences every time you connect even brake. It will remember your last setting preferences. After the initial installation, explain to the customer how even brake is connected and disconnected from the towed vehicle. Have the customer connect and disconnect even brake until he or she feels comfortable. Be sure to tell the customer to pump the brake pedal six to eight times before connecting even brake in order to remove any stored vacuum in the towed vehicle's power brake system. Also be sure to mention to the customer that if the towed vehicle's engine is ever started while even brake is installed, run even brake through two test cycles once the engine is turned off. Even brake will extend and retract the pedal clamp which will release the vacuum in the towed vehicle's power brake system. If the vacuum is not released, even brake will apply excessive braking force when it is activated, which may cause severe tire damage to the towed vehicle. Be sure to mention to the customer that the even brake power cord is always last in, first out. Once it receives power, any movement of the box could cause even brake to activate unexpectedly. Also, explain how the motorhome monitor works. Have the customer test for system communication during your walkthrough after the installation. Point out that if any message ends with a downward pointing arrow, pressing the button with the right hand arrow will give the customer additional information. Refer to the Even Brake Owner's Manual for the proper procedures to connect the breakaway cable. The Motorhome Monitor is a helpful troubleshooting guide. By scrolling through a series of monitor messages, you can identify and correct the cause of the messages. A downward pointing arrow at the end of any monitor message always indicates additional information. Press the button with the right hand arrow to scroll to the next message in the series. If the motorhome monitor does not communicate, move the monitor to the towed vehicle for a short range test. If the towed vehicle does not have an additional 12 volt outlet, use another 12 volt power source, such as a jumper box. Now, press the Even Brake test button. Even Brake will run a self-diagnostic test. If after the self-diagnostic test, the motorhome monitor text display reads, Test is good, system ready, 
Both the monitor and the ICX transmitter are in good working order. But one or both must be relocated to transmit the signal from the towed vehicle to the motorhome. Move the ICX transmitter and or the motorhome monitor. Then press the even brake test button. When the monitor reads test is good, system ready, the monitor is reading the signal from the even brake. However, if the LCD text message at the monitor is even brake, the monitor is not programmed to even brake. In order to program the monitor, follow the next three steps. To program the monitor, first press and hold the dim button for at least six seconds until the LCD text display reads, receiver is in learn mode. Release the dim button. The LCD text display will read, learning ICX number one, advance, okay. Now, press the button with the right hand arrow. The motorhome monitor will prompt you to press the even brake test button. After the test button is pressed, even brake will begin a self-diagnostic test. As part of the test, even brake will cycle the brake pedal clamp up and down three times. When the brake pedal clamp is depressed, the LCD display at the motorhome monitor will read, braking. When the LCD text message at the monitor changes to, test is good, system ready, the monitor is programmed. Now that you're familiar with even brake system and the basics of installation, be sure to read the owner's manual. It contains specific step-by-step -step installation instructions as well as important safety information. Roadmaster has determined that some customers are pulling fuses which may disrupt power to even brake. Before installing, ask the customer if fuses must be removed before the vehicle is towed. Be sure to verify the correct operation of even brake with the fuses removed that the customer indicated must be removed for towing.